Chapter 1981, Xi, are there any other strange creatures? Asked Twiling Feng. He wanted to learn about all of them right now and digest the information together. Right, except for cultivators, there are monsters and ghosts in our country as well, but they aren't harmful for human beings right now. Anyway, if we encounter them, we should kill them all. They're dangerous Slang Shouting said, in fact, there are strange creatures in other countries as well. Country R has mutants and ninjas who are stronger than ordinary people. Hearing that, Wiling Fing was surprised, but much less surprised than before. Because he started to get used to it. Since vampires, cultivators, monsters and ghosts were real, it was highly likely that mutants and ninjas existed too. I decided to report it to you now because I noticed that people from Country R are investigating cultivators. We don't get along with Country R once Country R learned that there are unusually strong people in our country. It couldn't stay calm. If I've guessed correctly, Country M must be aware of it as well, said Leng Shouting. He was right. Right after Country R discovered it, it shared the news with Country M, but Country M didn't believe it very much. Although Country R had a good relationship with Country M, it wouldn't tell Country M all the secrets. The leaders of Country R didn't tell Country M that there were mutants and ninjas in their country and Country M wasn't aware of the existence of vampires either. Even in Leng Shouting's country, nobody would believe in monsters or ghosts. Vampires didn't belong to any organization. They were a race living in the darkness. Mutants, however, were made by Country R, so were ninjas. Therefore, Leng Shouting's country sometimes got in trouble because of Country R's tricks. Nevertheless, it wouldn't happen again. Hearing that, Wiling Fing was annoyed in an instant, because it was indeed a bad thing. Anyway, it's difficult for them to find the cultivators, because most of the cultivators stay in their own world. They seldom come to the outside world, so it's not easy to see them. Even if they could meet cultivators, it's impossible for them to recognize cultivators unless they're strong enough to force cultivators to use magical power, said Leng Shouting. In that case, Wiling Fing felt a little relieved. Leng Shouting's talk with Wiling Fing was over by 11 a.m. so he left. Wiling Fing and his wife invited Leng Shouting to stay for lunch, but Leng Shouting declined, because he needed to have lunch with his girlfriend. Therefore, Wiling Fing and his wife didn't insist. Leng Shouting said that because he couldn't expose Shang Wen Yang and Jing Yun Yao, Wiling Fing and his wife were aware that Leng Shouting's girlfriend was Gunning. They had learned some about Gunning from the internet and Master Leng, so both of them had a good impression of her. At such a young age, she had achieved a, a lot, which was beyond ordinary people's abilities. Leng Shouting walked out of the Y family's house to his car then saw a young beautiful woman about 24 years old standing by it. Obviously, she was waiting for him. The moment the woman saw Leng Shouting, she showed excitement before walking towards him. Shouting, I knew it was you. Seeing the woman, Leng Shouting stayed as cool as usual. Hi, Lieutenant Xi. Hearing the way he called her, Xi was displeased. Shouting, we're outside the military base now. You don't need to call me formally. It couldn't be more obvious that Xi Ye was Leng Shouting's admirer. Miss Xi, Leng Shouting called her. Xi Ye was disappointed, because it wasn't what she wanted. She actually wanted Leng Shouting to call her Ye. Xi Ye's father was a lieutenant general. Although he wasn't working for the Leng family, he was Wai Ling Feng's subordinate, so Leng Shouting was unwilling to embarrass Xi Ye. Otherwise, he would ignore her and leave right away. Xi Ye had admired Leng Shouting for many years, and she joined the military for him as well. In order to keep up with Leng Shouting, she had been working hard these years. She even failed to finish her education in college. Anyway, it was very easy for her to get a diploma relying on her connections. That was also the reason why she was able to become a lieutenant at 25. Although she was barely comparable to Leng Shouting, she wasn't one of the special forces. She only made normal achievements, so she wasn't promoted as fast as Leng Shouting. She also knew that she wasn't as capable as Leng Shouting, otherwise she wouldn't regard him as her idol. Miss Xi, I'm sorry. I have to go now. Leng Shouting ignored Xi Yi once he finished and left in his car without delay. Xi Yi couldn't stop him. Watching him driving away, she was filled with sadness. She didn't understand why Leng Shouting never bothered to pay attention to her. Was the rumor true that Leng Shouting had no interest in women? Xi refused to believe that, 
so she never gave up. However, she didn't dare to annoy Leng Shouting in case Leng Shouting had a bad impression of her, which would be the end of their relationship. Seeing Xi Yi's interaction with Leng Shouting, Mrs. Y sighed, I believe Shouting and Yi could be a perfect couple, but it isn't enough for a romantic relationship. Well, I think Gunning and Shouting can be a perfect couple instead. Although I haven't seen Gunning yet, both her own abilities and family background are very outstanding. Most importantly, Shouting and Master Leng have a very good impression of her, said Wai Lingfeng. He also liked Xi Yi, but it wasn't helpful. You're right, Mrs. Y agreed with Wai Lingfeng. Back at home, Mrs. Y noticed Wai Lingfeng's worried face, so she asked him with concern, Anything wrong? Mrs. Y never asked about Wai Lingfeng's work, but she cared a lot about his mood. If Wai Lingfeng was willing to tell her, she would listen. If not, she wouldn't keep asking him for an answer. Nothing special. Just work, said Wai Lingfeng. He had no intention of continuing on that topic, because he couldn't share what Leng Shouting had told him with his wife. Since he said that, Mrs. Y stopped asking. Hash, chapter 1982, given him a chance, because Zhong Hai Garden and the Sai Heian were in the city center, they weren't far from each other. So after driving for only a dozen minutes, Leng Shouting arrived. He even waited for the traffic lights to turn green twice on the road. After having a meal in the Sai He Yuan and cultivating for a while, they went to the Leng family house together at 3 p.m., along with Shang Wen Yang. During this time, Master Leng and Shang Wen Yang often met. Because of Leng Shouting, they got along well with one another. Master Leng introduced Master Xuan Jiang Zong to Shang Wen Yang. They all knew that Shang Wen Yang was Leng Shouting's master so they were very polite to him. In addition, Shang Wen Yang was easygoing, so they had a harmonious relationship. Shang Wen Yang also taught them some skills of using their fists. He told them to practice more in their daily life, because it was good for their health. Therefore, Master Leng and his old friends were practicing the skills every day recently and became more flexible. It left them with a better impression of Shang Wen Yang. No matter when they found something fun, they never forgot to call him, but Shang Wen Yang didn't join them every time. Shang Wen Yang was at a very high level, but he had an even higher standard of himself, so he needed to cultivate most of his free time. After all, nowadays the magical power was getting thinner and thinner, so it took more and more time to cultivate. When Leng Shouting and the others arrived at the Leng family's old house, Jiang Shiyun also came back from visiting Leng Shoujiao at the hospital. She stepped out of her car earlier than them. She was in a good mood, because Leng Shoujiao got much better. In half a month, she could return home to recover. However, she became displeased once she saw Leng Shouting and other people, especially when she saw Ganing. She was full of hatred, because Leng Shoujiao was seriously injured due to Ganing. Although it was Leng Shoujiao's fault and they had to accept the consequences, it didn't mean they would stop blaming Ganing for that. After that, Jiang Shiyun gave them a look of dislike, then walked into the house. Leng Shouting and the others saw it, but they couldn't care less about Jiang Shiyun. Because Jiang Shiyun was unwilling to see Leng Shouting and other people, she went upstairs to her room after greeting Master Leng. She also ignored Leng Yuanzhen and his wife. They knew why Jiang Shiyun did that, but they also never liked Leng Yuanqian's family. Master Leng could do nothing about it, but Sai, shaking his head. It was impossible to improve their terrible relationship now, he could only hope it wouldn't get even worse. Shang Wen Yang came as well, so Master Leng went outside to welcome him in person. Hi, Shang Wen, welcome. Master Leng beamed at Shang Wen Yang. Well, Leng. I came to have a big meal at your place. You must tell your cook to prepare more food, said Shang Wen Yang without feeling embarrassed at all. No problem, I know you love meat. I've already told my cook to prepare all kinds of meat in the kitchen, Master Leng laughed. He was aware of Shang Wen Yang's large appetite. Shang Wen Yang was able to eat as much as four people by himself, so Master Leng had ordered the cook to prepare enough food for today's meal. Nice to see you. Mr. Shang Wen, Yun Yao, Shouting, Gunning. Leng Yuanzhen and his wife greeted them. Hi, Father, Yuanzhen, Yin, Jing Yun Yao called Master Leng. Hi, Grandpa, Uncle Yuanzhen, Aunt Yin. Hi, Grandpa Leng. Leng Shouting and Gunning greeted them as well. Hi. Master Leng gave them a light response, but couldn't hide the happiness on his face. As soon as they seated themselves, 
they heard rapid footsteps coming down. Once Leng Shouxi and Leng Shaoxun heard that Gunning and the others came, they went downstairs. Hi, Grandpa Shangguan, Aunt Yun Yao, shouting, Gunning. After they came downstairs, they exchanged greetings. They chatted with each other for a while in the living room. Then Leng Shouxi pulled Gunning outside to have a private talk. In the yard, when there was no one around, Leng Shouxi seemed hesitant to say something. What's wrong? Gunning asked before Leng Shouxi could say anything because she was a little anxious after seeing Leng Shouxi hesitating. Gunning had patience, but she got impatient because she was worried about Leng Shouxi. Besides, something must have happened given the expression on Leng Shouxi's face. After hesitating for a while, Leng Shouxi said, Um, Ning Ning, there is one thing I've been thinking about these days, but I don't know whom I can talk with. Can you help me with it? What is it? Asked Ning. The thing is that a friend of my good female friend's older brother told me that he likes me. I have a good impression of him as well. Although I'm not sure whether it's admiration, I'm willing to get to know him better. His family isn't in the mainland. They're in HK. His family is a large family in HK. I actually don't care much about one's family background, as long as there isn't a huge gap. He's now running a business in the capital. He's achieved a lot with a bright future ahead. Anyway, I always feel he has a high standard of himself, said Leng Shouxi. As she said that, she flushed a little. Obviously, Leng Shouxi liked the man more than she knew. Since you have a good impression of him. Why don't you give him a chance? You need more time to know him better to make sure whether you really like him, said Gunning. All of a sudden, Leng Shouxi looked upset. Um, but I found out my good female friend also likes him. She looks very different every time she talks about him. She seems happy, but looks sad. She never told me her real feelings, but I just feel that. What if my good female friend is hurt after I get together with the man? Well hearing that. Gunning realized it wasn't an easy question. One was her good friend, while the other was the man she liked, but her good friend also admired the man she liked. It was quite a dilemma. Obviously, the man disliked Leng Shouxi's good female friend, so it wasn't Leng Shouxi's fault even if she became the man's girlfriend, but her good female friend would feel hurt. Even if her good female friend never said anything about it and even helped them get together. It didn't mean she wouldn't feel sad at all. Gunning was sure that Leng Shouxi didn't want to see such a thing happen either. After all, both the man she liked and her good female friend mattered to her. Even though she also became friends with Zibing who admired Leng Shouting, she didn't know Zibing when she became Leng Shouting's girlfriend. Therefore, she didn't hurt her friend. Hash, Chapter 1983, Face It I'm afraid I can't help you with that Gunning wanted to help Leng Shouxi. But she couldn't think of a good idea. Fine, Leng Shouxi sighed. After remaining silent for a while, Leng Shouxi took a long breath. Forget it. I met my good female friend before him, and I got to know him because of my good female friend. I can't hurt her just for him. After all, I only have a good impression of him right now. It's not enough for me to give up my friendship. Actually, Leng Shouxi had already made that decision. So she seldom replied to the man's messages these days. Even if he called her, she would quickly end it after a brief or polite talk. Gunning came today, so she asked her casually. Leng Shouxi decided to give up, so Gunning said nothing further about that. Right at this moment, Leng Shouxi's phone rang, and the caller was her good female friend. Leng Shouxi picked it up and didn't bother to avoid Gunning. Shouxi, let's get together tonight said Leng Shouxi's friend. Um, I'm not free today, said Leng Shouxi, feeling a little uneasy. She knew she would meet the man once she went out, so she made up an excuse. You're not free? What are you busy with? Asked her friend. Leng Shouxi gave Gunning a glance, then came up with an excuse at once. My older cousin's girlfriend is here. I need to be with her. Your older cousin's girlfriend? Shouting or shamming? asked her friend with curiosity. Although she asked that question, she believed it must be Leng Shouting. Leng Shouting's character was well known to people in high society after all. Shouting, said Leng Shouxi. What? Leng Shouting has a girlfriend? Jesus, I can't believe my ears. What girl can win Leng Shouting's heart in this world? Leng Shouxi's friend exclaimed. She ached to meet the mysterious girl who was able to win Leng Shouting's heart. Why don't you come with her? We can have fun together. Well, 
I need to ask her about that. I'll reply to you later. I'm not sure whether she'll go. If she won't, I won't go either. I can't leave her alone. Len Shoxi actually wanted to turn her friend down directly, but thought it was a little impolite, so she changed her mind. After hanging up, Len Shoxi said to Ganing with embarrassment, Um, I can call her in a few minutes, telling her that Shouting's girlfriend is unwilling to go. Because she used Ganing as the excuse, Leng Shoxi felt a little embarrassed. You can't avoid it forever, said Ganing. Although she understood why Leng Shoxi did that, she didn't think it was a good idea. You're right, but I don't know how to face him. Leng Shoxi felt she was in a dilemma, but couldn't think of a better idea. If I were you, I would choose to face it and turn the admiration into friendship. Although it's difficult, you need to bear the result after making the decision. Since you don't want your friend to feel hurt, you can't let her know you are giving up the man for her, or she'll feel guilty and blame herself for that. You're unwilling to hurt her and she has the same idea. Therefore, you can only make up an illusion that you don't like the man instead of giving him up for her. Well, that's just my idea. I won't force you to do it. It's still up to you how to handle it, said Ganing. I agree with you. I should face it, but I can't let my friend know that I gave him up for her. Although it's hard to do at the beginning. It isn't a big deal Leng Shoxi thought Ganing's words made sense, so she decided to take her advice. Ning Ning, can you go with me tonight? To help me stay calm. Sure Ganing was worried about Leng Shoxi too, so she didn't refuse. After that, Leng Shoxi replied to her friend and they went back to the living room. Leng Yuankian needed to deal with something today, so he wasn't home until 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. It was time for dinner. Once Leng Shouting and the others came, Jiang Shiyun lost her appetite. However, she would be hungry if she didn't eat, so she forced herself to eat a little. After having lunch, Jiang Shiyun went outside with the excuse that she needed to visit Leng Shoujia, because she didn't want to see Leng Shouting and the others. Anyway, nobody cared where Jiang Shiyun went. Ganing and the others had a rest for a while after having lunch. Then Ganing told them that she needed to go out with Leng Shoxi to meet with her friends, so she wouldn't leave with them later. No one stopped Ganing from doing what she wanted to. At 8.30 p.m., Ganing and Leng Shoxi left in Leng Shoxi's car with Ganing being the driver. The place of their gathering was in a high-end clubhouse. It was about 9 p.m. when they arrived. Leng Shoxi's friend had already sent her the number of the private room. Once they reached the clubhouse, Leng Shoxi began to feel nervous. Luckily, she could still compose herself. Because it was a high-end clubhouse, customers here were all from high society. Therefore, it was very easy to see familiar faces. Shortly after they walked into the hall, Leng Shoxi and Ganing saw a familiar face which was Rongj. At this time, Rongj was alone. Although the Rong family had a bad relationship with the Leng family, they still greeted each other when they met. Hi, Miss Leng. Miss Garong greeted them first. Hi, Lord Rong. Ganing and Leng Shoxi said. After exchanging greetings, Ganing and Leng Shoxi walked away without another word. Rong said nothing either, watching Ganing walking away with mixed emotions. When Ganing and Leng Shoxi reached the third floor, she caught a familiar back, but couldn't recognize it. Before long, the person walked to a private room. Although Ganing only saw the side of his face, she recognized him this time. The man was the third son of the Yuan family, Yuan Wenrui. The two men who walked into the room along with him must be his bodyguards. Coincidentally, Ganing ran into Yuan Wenrui here. She wondered who was in the room right now. Therefore, Ganing used her jade eyes to see the inside. There were three men. Ganing had seen two of them, who were Shen Yanfing and Liu, while the other one was a stranger. Ganing thought they must be ready for another deal. But it wasn't convenient for her to eavesdrop outside the room now. Hash, Chapter 1984, The Person Leng Shoxi Likes. However, the private room Leng Shoxi and Xu were going to was right next to the one Yuan when Ruai and others stayed in. Although it was large and had good insulation, Ganing had unusually good hearing. There were four people in the private room Leng Shoxi's friend booked. There were two women and two men. The girls were at the same age as Leng Shoxi. They were very pretty in their early twenties. And the two men were slightly over twenty years old. They looked quite handsome in casual suits. With a glance, Ganing easily figured out which L of the two men was the person Leng Shoxi liked 
because the man stood up with excitement once he saw Leng Shouxi. Hi, Shouxi. He greeted her. Leng Shouxi felt a little embarrassed, but soon went back to normal and calmly said, Hi, hi, Shouxi. A girl stood up to welcome them afterwards. After a glance at Gunning by Leng Shouxi's side, she looked amazed. Shouxi, why don't you introduce your friend to us? Gunning was all pretty and elegant. No wonder Leng Shouting liked her. This is my cousin Shouting's girlfriend, or fiancé to be specific. She's Gunning Leng Shouxi introduced Gunning to her friends. She thought it wasn't enough to show Gunning's importance by introducing her as Leng Shouting's girlfriend. So she said blankly that Gunning was Leng Shouting's fiancé. Hearing that, the girl was shocked. In fact, it was already very shocking when she learned that Leng Shouting had a girlfriend. To her surprise, it was his fiancé. After all, a fiancé was totally different from a girlfriend. It was not only Zhuo Wenjun, another woman and man who knew Leng Shouting were also astonished. Hi, Miss Gu. I'm Shouxi's friend. My name is Zhuo Wenjun. Before Leng Shouxi introduced her, Zhuo Wenjun introduced herself to Gunning. She even reached out her hand to shake hands with Gunning. Hi, Miss Zhuo Gunning also reached out her hand to gently hold Zhuo Wenjun's hand. Come, let me introduce the others to you, said Zhuo Wenjun. Then she brought Gunning to the front of the other people. She introduced them from left to right to Gunning. This is my older brother's friend. Chen Junan. This is my older brother, Zhuo Zhao Chen, and this is his girlfriend, Lin Bi Shan. Nice to meet you all. Gunning greeted them. She guessed correctly. The man was precisely the one who liked Leng Shouxi. Nice to see you too, Miss Gu. They kindly greeted Gunning as well. Come here, have a seat. Zhuo Wen Jun said. She told Gunning and Leng Shouxi to sit by her sides, then poured a glass of wine for both of them. Miss Gu, you look very young. You must be a student, right? Asked Suo Zhao Chen. Yeah, I'm a freshman this year, said Gunning. Which university are you studying in? Suo Zhao Chen continued. Hearing Suo Zhao Chen ask Gunning two questions in a row, Lin Bishan frowned, especially when she saw the excitement in his eyes. Lin Bishan was quite displeased, but didn't show it on her face. She knew Suo Zhao Chen wasn't a playboy, but Gunning was too attractive to resist. Therefore, Lin Bishan was worried that Zhuo Zhao Chen might be attracted to Gunning. However, Gunning was Leng Shouting's fiancé. If he dared to steal Gunning from Leng Shouting, he would be too stupid. The capital university, Gunning said. Hearing that, Zhuo Zhao Chen got more excited. Are you the owner of Xiangyun Antique Store? Hearing that, Lin Bishan realized the reason why Zhuo Zhao Chen was so excited. In an instant, Lin Bishan felt ashamed for her suspicion just now. At the same time, she was also amazed by Gunning's business. She had heard of Xiangyun Antiques Tour. At the auction a few days ago, Xiangyun Antiques Tour sold a whole set of bronze chimes for over 8 billion yuan. Nevertheless, she didn't notice who the owner of Xiangyun Antiques Tour was, so she failed to recognize Gunning just now. Hearing Zhuo Zhao Chen's words, Chen Junan was shocked too because he was aware of that as well. Although 8 billion yuan was nothing for the Chen family, it was a lot of money for him. From the time he started up a business till now, he only had over a billion yuan in assets, which was quite outstanding among his peers. He admired Gunning, and wasn't jealous of her at all, because it wasn't necessary at all. Yeah, it's me Gunning admitted it. Wow, I can't believe you're so successful. You made a lot of money within such a short time. I also heard you picked up the bronze chimes by chance, right? Said Suo Wenjun in great surprise. Yeah, I picked them up in a cave. They must have been dug out by gravediggers, then were hidden in the cave. I found them by accident, said Gunning. You were so lucky. Said Suo Wenjun. She didn't doubt Gunning's words at all. Since Gunning said that, the others chose to believe her. When they were talking, Chen Junan glanced at Leng Shouxi once in a while. Leng Shouxi, on the contrary, deliberately avoided his glances. As a result, she looked at either Gunning or Zhuo Wenjun. However, she actually wasn't as calm as she seemed to be on the surface. Chen Junan wasn't dumb, so he could see that Leng Shouxi was avoiding him on purpose. Besides, given the way she talked with him these days, he knew she was losing interest in him. However, he didn't understand why Leng Shouxi suddenly changed her attitude. After all, there was chemistry between them a few days ago. Although Leng Shouxi didn't show much interest, 
they at least got along well with each other and he could see that she had a good impression of him. He understood it took time and patience to chase a girl, but he couldn't insist if the girl disliked him. While Ganning talked with them, she didn't stop paying attention to the situation in the next private room. Before she heard any important information, she saw a bug under the desk. Obviously, they were targeted. Since they were targeted, there should be more than just a bug. However, because of other people in the room, Gunning couldn't pay too much attention to the next room in case they noticed her abnormal behavior. Therefore, Gunning made up an excuse that she needed to use the ladies' room. She decided to observe them in the washroom, because there was only a wall between the washroom and the next private room, which was very convenient for her observation. Moreover, she would talk about it with Leng Shouting as well. Once Gunning was gone, Leng Shouxi got nervous, but couldn't stop her from going to the washroom. Anyway, in order to not meet Chen Junnan's eyes, Leng Shouxi kept on talking with Suo Wen Jun about Gunning once Gunning was gone. Hash, Chapter 1985, needs more than just good luck. Zuo Wen Jun was very interested in Gunning, so she temporarily forgot why she called Leng Shouxi out tonight. It was not only Zuo Wen Jun, the others were also very interested in Gunning. After finding out that Gunning actually had many other businesses, they were shocked and admired her more than ever. Once Gunning went into the ladies' room, she used her jade eyes again to see what the people were doing in the private room. She was right. There wasn't only a bug, there was also a pinhole camera in the upper left corner. Yuan Wen Rui and the other people were talking about their affairs without any concern. They had no idea that they were being monitored. They dared to do that because they trusted this private clubhouse too much. Private clubs were always extremely safe places for the exchange of important information. Many high-ranking officials liked to come here to talk about things and most of the time it was classified matters. They had never been monitored or exposed before. Therefore, they wouldn't think that they were monitored this time. Gunning was curious about the person who was spying on them. Since someone was spying on them, the person must be in a nearby private room. Out of curiosity, Gunning used her jade eyes to see the inside of other private rooms without caring about whether it was moral. After checking several of the nearest rooms, she found nothing unusual till she saw the private room that Rongj was in. Rongj was with two men, and the two men weren't unfamiliar to Ganing. One was Huo Jian, and the other was the instructor of the next class. The three of them were sitting in front of the sofa. On the table, there was a laptop, and Rongj was sitting in the middle wearing earphones. When Ganing saw the computer screen on their desk, she realized what they were doing. It was Rongj who was monitoring Yuan when Ruai and the others, because the video on the computer was the video of Yuan Wen Rui and the others in the private room. Although Yuan Wen Rui and the others were being targeted, it was a good thing. However, because of the relationship between the Rong family and the Leng family, Gunning was afraid that the Rong family might use Shen Yanfeng's matter this time to attack the Leng family. Therefore, Gunning immediately took out her phone. Because it wasn't convenient for her to call Leng Shouting, she sent him a message. At this time, Leng Shouting and the others had just returned to the Saihian. Once he heard the sound of a new message, he took out his phone to read it. The moment he saw the content of Gunning's message, he was mad. It was really time to punish the Shen family. As long as the Leng family took action to punish the Shen family, everyone would know that the Leng family already gave up on them. Therefore, it would be useless even if the wrong family planned to defame the Leng family by using the Shen family. After that, Leng Shouting called Master Leng and shared the news with him. Although Leng Shouting was already completely in charge of the matter of dealing with the Shen family, he needed to report the latest news to Master Leng. Knowing that, Master Leng agreed with him silently. He was disappointed by the Shen family long ago, so he was unwilling to protect it now. After sending the message to Leng Shouting, Gunning went back to her friends. She was only absent for three minutes from beginning to end. Miss Gu, I can't believe how unbelievable you are. You have so many companies, said Suo Wen Jun with excitement and admiration once Gunning was back. She already took Gunning as her idol. Yeah, you know what, the goddess in my eyes is Tang Xiaoxiao, said Lin Bishan with admiration as well. Although she disliked Gunning for a while just now because of the misunderstanding. She began to admire Gunning after learning the truth and knowing how successful Gunning was right now. There were many successful people, 
but none of them were as successful as Gunning. Misku, you're so amazing. You already impressed me because of the bronze chimes. However, unexpectedly, you have many other companies at such a young age. You've surpassed all your predecessors, said Zuo Zouchen. He didn't know much about Gunning before, but he was already aware that she was young and successful. After finding out that she had even more achievements, he began to admire her. He wasn't jealous so he wouldn't unkindly wonder whether Gunning relied on dirty tricks to become successful. Gunning was young, but it didn't mean she lacked abilities. Especially after knowing that she was Leng Shouting's fiancé, he tended to believe that Gunning was able to achieve success on her own. After all, Leng Shouting wouldn't choose an ordinary girl given his family background and abilities. He wasn't saying that Leng Shouting was a snob. However, even if Gunning didn't have an extraordinary family background, she at least had to be very outstanding by herself for Leng Shouting to be attracted to her. Yeah, Misku, you're really unbelievable Chen Junan chimed in. Even though he wasn't bad compared with his peers, he was nothing in front of Gunning. He never felt arrogant because of his achievements, because he hadn't achieved his goal yet. Everyone kept on complimenting Gunning, but Gunning was already used to it, so she didn't feel embarrassed at all. Since they complimented her, Gunning felt she should be modest. I'm flattered. I'm just very lucky. Misku, you're being too modest. One needs the ability to be so lucky all the time, said Zuo Zouchen. Yeah, having good luck is also one's ability, otherwise one would never achieve anything, said Chen Junan. They talked about that topic for a long time, then changed to other topics. Misku, may I know, did you chase Lord Leng, or did he chase you? asked Zuo Wenjun. She asked that question because she couldn't imagine a cold man like Leng Shouting chasing a girl. He chased me, Gunning said. Hearing that, Zuo Wenjun and the others were all surprised, because it was totally beyond their imagination. Given Leng Shouting's appearance and family background, he had countless admirers in the capital, but his cold face and air made many girls stay away from him. Normally, they gave up after being treated coldly once or twice, because Leng Shouting's cold face was too scary to accept. Not many people could stand it. While Gunning chatted with them, she didn't forget to pay attention to the private room next door. Gunning got the news that they had made an appointment to trade in a certain town the night after tomorrow, but didn't know the specific time and place. In addition, the time and place were only initially set by them, and it might be changed at any time. They didn't stay there for too long and left at 10 p.m. When they were gone, Rongju and his people walked away as well. Since they left, Gunning could stop spying on them. She could only hope Leng Shouting took action earlier than Rongju, otherwise it would be difficult to deal with it later. Hash, Chapter 1986, Have you misunderstood something? Because if any news that exposed Shen Yanfeng's deeds had something to do with the Leng family, some people would believe it. Although it might not have a big impact on the Leng family, the Leng family would do its best to avoid it. Gunning believed in Leng Shouting, but she still told Kei to investigate Shen Yanfeng's illegal deeds out of concern. Even if it wasn't very helpful, it wasn't a bad thing as long as it had an effect. Chen Junan looked at Leng Shouxi all the time, but Leng Shouxi kept avoiding his eyes, unless she had to face him when Chen Junan talked directly to her. However, she stayed cool. Zuo Wenjun couldn't stand it, so she pulled Leng Shouxi to the washroom. It was very normal that girls went to the washroom together, so nobody felt it was strange. After walking into the washroom, Zuo Wenjun asked Leng Shouxi, Shouxi, why are you suddenly so cool to Junan? Hearing that, Leng Shouxi looked a little uneasy, but she forced herself to stay calm. Cool? Was I very enthusiastic about him before? Have you misunderstood something? Zuo Wenjun didn't notice that Leng Shouxi had a guilty conscience. Seeing her being like this, Zuo Wenjun was annoyed. You weren't very enthusiastic to him before, but weren't so cool either. Junan likes you, and you have a very good impression of him too, right? Leng Shouxi took a long breath, then said looking guilty, all right. I guess I have to be honest with you. I did have a very good impression of Chen Junan before, but you know it means nothing. I have a good impression of him, which doesn't mean I like him. It takes more time to know him better to fall in love with him. I know Chen Junan is a very outstanding young man, but I just can't love him. Hearing that, Zuo Wenjun had a big frown. Do you mean you're in love with someone else? Yes, 
said Leng Shoxi. In order to stop them from connecting her with Chen Junnan, Leng Shoxi had to cover the lie with another one. However, it was a lie, so Leng Shoxi actually felt quite unhappy. It wasn't the truth, but she had to pretend she was telling the truth. Zuo Wen Jun couldn't believe it, so she stared straight at Leng Shoxi's face to observe her. But Leng Shoxi looked very serious. Zuo Wen Jun had to believe it. All of a sudden, Zuo Wen Jun put on a wry smile. Fine. It's a good thing. At least you don't need to face unpleasant things. What does it mean? Leng Shoxi asked curiously. The annoying affairs inside the Chen family. In fact, Junan has the same tragic experience as Shouting. When he was little, his parents passed away. He has an aunt, two uncles, but none of them like him. Only Master Chen treats Junan well. Luckily, Junan has always been smart ever since he was little. He's also the most outstanding one in the young generation of the Chen family, so others are worried that he'll take over the Chen family's wealth and power. As a result, they never stop scheming against him in private. Even though Junan is outstanding, he's too young and doesn't have much experience. He can't control the members of the Chen family and its company. Therefore, Master Chen let Junan build his own career in the capital in order to help him grow stronger. After he's influential enough, He'll be able to control those people in the Chen family and its company, because of his tragic experience. My older brother and I are very sympathetic to him. We also admire his abilities. We know he's a very good, upright man. Although the Chen family isn't as influential as the Leng family, there aren't many big families that are comparable to it now. As long as there isn't a huge gap and there is love, it isn't a big deal, right? said Zuo Wen Jun. All of a sudden, she realized she had said too much about it. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have talked about that with you. Anyway, you don't like him. I cared about your relationship with him only because I was worried you might find it annoying to deal with his family in the future. Knowing that, Leng Shoxi had mixed emotions. To her surprise, Chen Junin had such a terrible experience. In that case, Shouting seemed to be luckier than Chen Junan. At least only some of his family members disliked him, and he had other relatives who cared about him. It was only because of Leng Shouting's cold character that they seldom talked with each other. However, Leng Shouting had already changed a lot after meeting Ganing and he gradually began to talk with them. And the situation was greatly improved after his mother was back. If so, I have great sympathy for him as well but it still has nothing to do with love. I hope he can meet someone that's in love with him in the future, said Leng Shoxi. Although she hesitated for a while because of Zuo Wenjun's words, she still made that decision in the end. Yeah, hope so, said Zuo Wenjun. Then she said nothing further about that topic. All right, we should go out now. After that, the two walked out. Everyone knew Zuo Wenjun went inside to have a talk with Leng Shoxi. But Leng Shoxi stayed the same man Zuo when Jun had a resigned look. From that, they figured out the result. Accordingly, Chen Junan was in a worse mood and began to drink faster. When people were in a bad mood, they wanted to get drunk. Chen Junan's mood was too obvious to be hidden, so everyone saw it. Zuo Zhao Chen and the others couldn't do anything about it, because they couldn't force Leng Shoxi to be together with Chen Junan. They didn't have that right or power. Since Chen Junan's love failed to be accepted by Leng Shoxi, they shouldn't be together otherwise neither of them would be happy in the relationship. Seeing Chen Junan like that, Leng Shoxi also felt sad. But she had to compose herself. Gunning was the most calm one in the room. She could understand Chen Junan's sadness, but didn't think it was a big deal, because many people had the same experience. In this world, not everyone's love would have a positive response. You couldn't force another person to love you just because you love him or her after all. Gunning wasn't judging Leng Shoxi's affair with Chen Junan but it was indeed very normal. Although Leng Shoxi and Chen Junan had a good impression of each other, it was over now. Because Leng Shoxi rejected Chen Junan for her friend, it became unrequited love. Anyway, it was rare to have a happy ending from first love. Because of the worsening atmosphere, they didn't hang out late this time and they separated at 11 p.m. They had all drunk a little, so they couldn't drive. Zuo Zhao Chen and Chen Junan paid for designated drivers. While Gunning called Leng Shouting, Hash, Chapter 1987, there is a condition. When they separated, Chen Junan looked at Leng Shoxi. He wanted to say something, 
but didn't say it aloud. He actually wanted to have a private talk with Leng Shouxi, but he decided not to do that upon thinking of her attitude. He was unwilling to embarrass her. Gunning and the others didn't go out until Leng Shouting came, so Leng Shouting was already waiting in front of the car when they arrived at the parking lot. Seeing Leng Shouting, Zuo Zhao Chen and his friends went to greet him. Although Chen Junan didn't know Leng Shouting, he knew Leng Shouting was Leng Shouxi's older cousin. Therefore, in order to show his politeness, he went over as well. Facing Leng Shouting, Zuo Zhao Chen and the others felt a little stressed, even if Leng Shouting didn't mean them. When they said hello to him, Leng Shouting only replied in a flat voice, Hi. After that, Leng Shouxi and Gunning got in the car and left. When Leng Shouxi was gone, Chen Junan felt even more disappointed. However, after they left, Zuo Zhao Chen and others didn't rush to get into their cars and drive away, instead they turned to look at Zuo Wenjun. They asked her what had happened. Even though they had already figured out the result from Leng Shouxi and Zuo Wenjun's attitudes, they still wanted to learn the details. Zuo Wenjun said in a resigned tone, I asked Shouxi why she suddenly became so cool to Junan. Shouxi told me she only has a good impression of Junan. It doesn't mean she likes him and it can easily change. Perhaps she just lost interest in Junan, so she stayed away from him to prevent embarrassment. Although Leng Shouxi said that she loved someone else, Zuo Wenjun didn't have the heart to say it aloud, because she was afraid that Chen Junan would be heavily hit. It was a very normal answer, because they all knew a good impression didn't mean love, and it could change at any time. Actually, even two people in love could easily change because of something, let alone when they only had a good impression of each other. Well, if so, I won't insist. We should go home now, said Chen Junan with a wry smile, then walked to his car. Zuo Zhao Chen and the others didn't know what to do about it, but they didn't comfort Chen Junan either. Although he liked Leng Shouxi, they didn't get together at all, so he would be fine in a few days. Chen Junan valued a romantic relationship but he also had reason. It wasn't necessary for him to punish himself for something he didn't own. He had something more important to work and fight for. When Gunning and the others left, Leng Shouxi finally couldn't control her emotions any longer. She looked very upset and was in a bad mood. Gunning said nothing. She didn't comfort her, because she needed to digest it. After driving Leng Shouxi back to the Leng family's house, Leng Shouting drove back to the Sai Heian along with Gunning because Jing Yan Yao stayed in the Sai He Yuan and she was the only female there, they were afraid she might feel uneasy. Therefore, Gunning and Leng Shouting wouldn't stay in the Leng family's house for the night. On their way to the Sai He Yuan, Gunning and Leng Shouting talked about Shen Yanfeng. Leng Shouting was unwilling to see the wrong family take action before him, so he decided to act tomorrow. Leng Shouting would go to catch Shen Yanfeng in person. He had collected enough evidence of Shen Yanfeng's illegal deeds with the Chen family and Chen Jinping, so he already had a plan to punish the Shen family and the Chen family these days even if Gunning didn't tell him what had happened today. Ning Ning, does Chi Tanlin owe you a favor? Asked Leng Shouting because Gunning had told him she had helped Chi Tanlin deal with mutants last time. Yes Gunning understood Chi Tanlin would be involved once Leng Shouting asked her that. In fact, even if Chi Tanlin didn't owe her a favor, he wouldn't hesitate to help her as long as she needed him. Well, what the Shin family has done this time has a lot to do with Long Danu. We must get rid of them completely. Long Danu is now a senior manager in the Kyrin gang. If we kill Long Tanu, the Kyren gang will be humiliated to some extent. It might do something to cause a scene. We can solve the problem, but it's better if we avoid unnecessary trouble. It'll be for the best if the Kyren gang can directly give up Long Tanu. Can you help us with that and tell Chi Tanlin to give up Long Tanu? Said Leng Shouting. No problem. Gunning agreed without thinking about it. Leng Shouting had told her about Shen Yanfeng's relationship with Long Tanu. So she agreed that it was necessary to persuade Chi Tanlin to give up Long Tanu. In fact, as long as she promised to give Chi Tanlin a few more power crystals as payment, he would definitely agree to do it. However, even if Chi Tanlin refused, Gunning was determined to remove Long Tanu. Oh, do we need to make an arrangement to make it like a drug deal? We can catch him at the scene, said Gunning. Of course, if it's possible, Leng Shouting said. 
we need Chi Tanlin's agreement. Gunning was a doer, so she took out her phone to call Chi Tanlin once she agreed to help Leng Shouting. Leng Shouting felt it was a little late, so he told Gunning to do it tomorrow, but Gunning didn't think it was a problem. Therefore, she made the call right away. Chi Tanlin just received news that his men were hurt again, and it was serious, but he was running out of Gunning's power crystals. He wanted to call Gunning to buy more at this moment. However, it was late now, so he decided to call Gunning tomorrow. Coincidentally, Gunning called him. There is indeed a connection between us. I was thinking to call you just as you called me, said Chi Tanlin on purpose trying to flirt with Gunning once he answered her call. It sounded as if Gunning was his girlfriend. Hearing that, Gunning already knew why Chi Tanlin wanted to call. He simply wanted her power crystals, so she didn't think it was a big deal. However, Leng Shouting was displeased when he heard that and he looked mad in an instant. Nevertheless, he said nothing. Oh, anything up? Asked Gunning deliberately. I need more of your medicine, said Chi Tanlin. Sure, but there is a condition said Gunning. What is it? asked Chi Tanlin. I need to deal with the senior manager of your gang. His name is Long Tanu, so if you're willing to give him up, I'll sell you the medicine with a 50% discount, said Gunning. Why do you want to deal with Long Tanu? Chi Tanlin wasn't annoyed when he heard that news. There is a grudge between us, Gunning said. Well, if you don't agree, I can deal with him as well on my own but we won't make any more deals in that case. Gunning was threatening him, but it depended on Chi Tanlin whether he would accept it. He could choose between Long Tanu and the medicine which could save his people's lives. Hash, chapter 1988, can't miss the great chance. Sure, I can do that, but not for the medicine. I'm willing to do it because of you, said Chi Tanlin, showing some affection towards Gunning. Gunning felt nothing. But Leng Shouting was more displeased now. He disliked what Chi Tanlin said to Gunning. It couldn't be more obvious that Chi Tanlin liked Ningning. However, it didn't matter, because Ningning belonged to him. Gunning clearly sensed Leng Shouting's emotional change, but she could do nothing about it. Do you need me to send him to you? asked Chi Tanlin. No need. I just need you to assign a task to him. Tell him to make a drug deal with my people and we'll catch him then. The Chiron gang won't be exposed, but I can't promise that he won't be exposed, said Gunning. I don't care. I can say he isn't one of us, said Chi Tanlin airily. Since he agreed to do it for Gunning, he was mentally prepared for the worst result. Great. We'll take action tomorrow. I'll tell you once the place of the deal is settled. It won't take long. Just a few minutes, said Gunning. Sure, said Chi Tanlin. After that, they hung up. Where do you think is the best place? Gunning asked Leng Shouting. Leng Shouting thought for a while, then said, We can do it in Jingshan district. It's comparatively isolated with many factory areas. There are a lot of abandoned factories and warehouses as well. An abduction happened in an abandoned warehouse the before, so I know the place very well. On 20 section, there is only one abandoned warehouse. So it's easy to find it. Yu An Wen Rui's deal with Shen Yanfeng was the night after tomorrow, so they had to do it tomorrow night. They would arrest Long Tanu tomorrow night, and Shen Yanfeng the day after tomorrow, so there was no need to wait for Yu An Wen Rui to deal with Shen Yanfeng, because Rongj would be involved by then. Sure Gunning said, I can be the one who's going to see Long Tanu. I can disguise myself as Tang Aiming. Great. I'll arrange some people to help you Leng Shouting didn't turn her down, because it wasn't a big deal for Gunning. He would be nearby as well, and would show up to help her quickly. It was dangerous to make such an illegal deal, so Gunning couldn't go alone. She needed at least five people to follow her there. Right Gunning agreed. After that, she called Chi Tanlin again and told him the address as well as the person they were going to make a deal with. It was a woman called Tang Aining who was about 20 years old. They could only do it at night, so the time was set at 9 p.m. tomorrow. Long Danu would have enough time to come. How many drugs do you need? Asked Chi Tanlin for a better arrangement. Give us 5 kilograms. I'll return them to you once it's done, said Gunning. Although Leng Shouting had caught many drug dealers before, he could only turn a blind eye on Chi Tanlin even if he was clearly aware that Chi Tanlin was dealing drugs. Because the government needed illegal gangs to balance some forces, they weren't punished severely. As long as they didn't break the law or embarrass the government publicly, 
they would be safe. No problem, said Chi Tan Lin. He actually didn't care whether the drugs would be returned, but there was no reason for him not to accept them since Ginning was willing to return the drugs to him. I'm in the capital now. If you want the drugs, send someone to get them back, or you can come in person. I won't send them to you, said Ginning. Sure, Yu Hao will go to get them back, said Chi Tan Lin. If he could see Ginning, he would surely go there in person, but he was occupied and couldn't go there as he wanted. Okay, tell him to go directly to the city center. 20 restaurant on 20 road, then give me a call. I'll see him there, Gunning said. No problem, but it's rare that you're willing to give me a 50% discount. Can I ask for more pills? Chi Tanlin asked. 10 million yuan for 20. There is no more, Gunning said. Great. Chi Tanlin agreed with alacrity because he didn't plan to ask for too many. He actually thought Gunning would only give him 10 pills with a 50% discount, but he was happy to get 20 pills with 10 million yuan. Since Gunning proposed it on her own, he wouldn't disagree. Leng Shouting didn't know that Gunning set such a high price for the power crystals, so he was shocked when he learned that. Anyway, he could feel that Gunning deliberately let Chi Tanlin pay more for them. Thinking of that, Leng Shouting felt much better. But he still asked with uncertainty, did you sell a pill to him for a million yuan before in order to get more money from him? Hearing that, Gunning smiled with pride. Yeah, Chi Tanlin is very rich after all. I can't miss the chance to make more money from him. He left a bad first impression on me anyway. Knowing that, Leng Shouting was more pleased. Gunning absolutely knew what he was thinking, precisely because she knew Leng Shouting disliked Chi Tanlin, she said that to please him. Anyway. She told the truth. Did I tell you when Xin, Jia Kai, and I had gone to have fun at the Earth nightclub in City B? We played the slot machine and won the whole prize pool. There was a hundred million yuan in it. You know the casino won't let you leave with too much money, so I was called to a private room. Chi Tanlin wanted to gamble with me. I won three hundred million yuan in the end. He refused to let me go at that time. Therefore, we had a fight and I won again. He also got to know that I'm excellent at fighting and that I have magical pills. As a result, he gave in to me. In order to have the magical pills, he became polite to me afterwards. He's willing to satisfy my requests as long as they're acceptable. However, he's a little annoying sometimes, so you don't need to take his words seriously, said Gunning. She did her best to connect their relationship with benefits in case Leng Shouting was unhappy. After all, what Chi Tanlin just said to her had annoyed Leng Shouting. I know, said Leng Shouting. After Gunning's explanation, Leng Shouting felt better. He had met Chi Tanlin and fought against him a few times, so he was aware of Chi Tanlin's character. Chi Tanlin was arrogant, cruel, and ruthless. Without outstanding abilities, one couldn't survive from a fight against him. Therefore, since Gunning had already met Chi Tanlin, it was better that they had a good relationship. Chi Tanlin might not be able to hurt Gunning, but he could hurt people in Gunning's circles and her companies, which wasn't something they wanted to see. Given Chi Tanlin's character, he could definitely do that. Back in the Saihe Yuan, Jing Yun Yao was still up and she was cultivating. It was very late, but cultivators never cared about day or night. Chapter 1989 you're not charming enough. After cultivation, cultivators were very energetic. Therefore, even if they cultivated all night, they would still be refreshed the next day. In the Saihe Yuan, Leng Shouting and Gunning didn't want to stay alone for too long, so they began to cultivate together. Leng Shouting was at a high level, so he could cultivate for a long time, while Gunning just joined him. She couldn't cultivate for too long. Therefore, Gunning had a rest after an hour. In the Leng family's house, Leng Shouxi stayed in her own room, lost in thought the entire time till late at night. She didn't want to sleep at all. She wasn't the only one who lay sleepless, because Chen Junan suffered the same thing tonight. He ached to call, text, or send Leng Shouxi a message on WeChat, but gave up in the end. He was afraid it might disturb her. That night, neither Leng Shouting nor Jing Yan Yao had a rest and they cultivated until the next day. Early in the morning, Leng Shouting arranged for people to make the deal with Long Tanu tonight, and some that would go with him to catch Long Tanu. At 11 p.m., Gunning received a call from Yu Hao. He had already arrived at the restaurant she told him about. Afterwards, Gunning walked out. The restaurant was near the Saihe Yuan, 
So Ganning arrived on foot in five minutes. After Ganning showed up, she gave Yu Hao the pills and left. Yu Hao wanted to invite her to share a meal together, but Ganning declined, because she needed to dine with Leng Shouting and the others. As for the money, Chi Tanlin had already transferred it to Ganning this morning. He never hesitated to pay. After lunch, Leng Shouting and the others had a rest for a short while before leaving. Because of the task, Xi Jinjin and his teammates went back to the capital. They would carry out the task at night, so they would dine together in the afternoon to talk about it. The appointed place was Shengxi Hotel. Before they went there, Ganning and Leng Shouting drove Jing Yan Yao back to Mountain River Garden first. So when Ganning and Leng Shouting arrived at Shengxi Hotel, the other people were already the, including Xi Jinjin, Chen Meng, Xinb, and Si Ming. They would follow Leng Shouting to do the task, while some policemen would also join them. They would meet later tonight. Ganning would have six soldiers to help her and they would meet later tonight as well. It was still before 5 p.m., so they talked about tonight's task. Before that, Ganning said, since we're going to talk about that before dinner, why don't we call Being to dine with us? Ganning said that looking at Xi Jinjin. Hearing that, everyone turned to stare at Xi Jinjin looking for gossip, while Xi Jinjin avoided their eyes with embarrassment. Tell us, who's Being? asked Xin. It can't be more obvious. She must be Jinjin's girlfriend, said Si Ming. It was only a guess, but Ganning said it to Xi Jinjin's face after all. So they naturally had that idea. Why didn't you tell us you have a girlfriend? We were worried about your happiness. Said Chen Meng in annoyance. Don't be ridiculous. Xi Jinjin denied it at once, then explained. It's too early to say that. No way. Aren't you charming enough? Isn't the girl attracted to you? Xin said with disdain. Xi Jinjin fell into silence because he lost confidence in himself exactly because of that. Really? That's the reason? Si Ming was surprised, because Xi Jinxian always had many choices. They had rarely seen a woman who disliked him. It was understandable that not every woman would fall in love with Xi Jinxian. However, given Xi Jinxian's appearance, it couldn't be easier for him to chase a girl. Most importantly, Xi Jinxian was a quality man. I'm not money. Not everyone loves me Xi Jinxian argued in a resigned tone. The girl is just being very careful about a romantic relationship. It isn't because she dislikes Jinxian. They haven't spent much time together after all, said Ganing. She wasn't defending Xi Jinxian, but Xi being. If so, spend more time with her. The girl needs to know how good Jinxian is so that they can get together said Xin. He cared a lot about Xi Jinjin's happiness. Right, we also want to see the future girlfriend of our brother. I bet she must be very outstanding, said Chen Meng. I agree. Si Ming chimed in. Stop it now. She might be scared away if you keep on like this Xi Jinjin complained. Seeing their reaction, he was indeed a little afraid to call Xi Being in case he was embarrassed too. Come on. We'll surely behave ourselves if the girl comes. We won't ask further about your relationship. Chen Meng sat next to Xi Jinxian. He abruptly patted Xi Jinxian's shoulder once Xi Jinxian said that. Yeah, I believe them, said Ganing. Left with no choice, Xi Jinxian had to call Xi Ying, but he didn't do it in the private room. Instead, he went out. Although Xi Jinxian seemed to be unwilling to do it. He actually couldn't wait when Ganing mentioned Xi Being just now. Xi Jinxian invited Xi Being to come over and share a meal. Because Leng Shouting and Ganing were there as well, Xi Being agreed. When Xi Being arrived at Shengxi Hotel, it was nearly 6 p.m. It was already 5 p.m. when she left her home after receiving Xi Jinxian's call, so it took more than half an hour from the southern district to the city center. Xi Jinxian went to meet her at the gate of the hotel in person because they had already finished their discussion about the task within 10 minutes. He had told Xi Being the number of the private room, but his friends all asked him to go out to see her. He was willing to do that, but felt a little shy. As a result, when his friends encouraged him to go out to see her, he made use of the chance. However, a few minutes before Xi Being showed up, Xi Jinjin met Mrs. Jin and Miss Jin. Mrs. Ji was invited by her friends to dine at Shengxi Hotel. The moment she got out of her car, she saw Xi Jinjin. Mrs. Jin and her daughter showed excitement when they saw him. Xi Jinjin, on the contrary, felt upset, but it was too late for him to avoid them now. Jinjin, what a coincidence. 
Did you come to Shangxi Hotel for a meal as well? Are your friends here? Mrs. Jusked with a smile. Yeah, I'm with a few colleagues, said Xijinshan in a flat voice. Chapter 1990, I'm not familiar with them. Hi, Lord Xu, Jizai Jing said to Xijinshan elegantly. Although she was a little shy to see him, she didn't show that on her face, because she knew Xijinshan was a soldier and hated phony women. It was true that Xijinshan disliked phony women but he still didn't bother to pay much attention to her. He only replied to her without much interest. Hi, Miss Jinjin, have you been very busy recently? Asked Mrs. J because she heard nothing from Mrs. Xu and lost patience. She had to ask Xu Jinjin about it once she met him. Yeah, I still need to work in a while, said Xu Jinjin. Oh, you must be very busy. When can you be free? Can we share a meal together? asked Mrs. J again. Her purpose couldn't be more obvious. Well, it's a women's gathering. I don't think it's appropriate for me to join in. You can share the meal with my mother. Xijinshan obviously understood Mrs. J's meaning, but he pretended to be unaware of it. Your mother and I are good friends. We're not strangers. There is nothing inappropriate. In fact, I need your help. Xijing just came home. She doesn't have many friends. Can you take her to make some friends if it's possible? said Mrs. J. I'm sorry, Mrs. J. I have a lot of work to do. I don't have time to make friends normally. Do you think I'm a good-for-nothing playboy who plays about every day? Besides, I always gather together with men. Miss J is a young girl. Shouldn't she make more friends with other girls? Mrs. J. If you want me to take her to my friends' gatherings, other people might think Miss J isn't a good girl. Don't you care about her reputation? Even if Xijinshan had good manners. He couldn't help but laugh at Mrs. Ji hearing that. Mrs. Jin and Jizai Jing were displeased. Why did Xijinshan always misunderstand their words? Jizai Jing could see that Xijinshan did it on purpose. He must know what her mother really meant. Did he really have no interest in her? Jinjin, I didn't mean that Mrs. Ji still couldn't see that Xijinshan did it on purpose. So she tried to explain it in case he had a bad impression of Jizai Jing. Right at this moment, a female voice interrupted them. Oh, I'm afraid I showed up at the wrong time. Zibiying arrived with Mengda and Nan, but she saw Xijinshan talking with Mrs. Jin and Miss Ji once she opened the car door. She was displeased, so she mocked them. Xijinshan was unhappy, because Mrs. Jin and Miss Ji made Zibiying misunderstand him. Mrs. Jin and Miss Ji knew that Zibiying was the friend of Xijinshan's younger sister, so they didn't think further about that. Not at all. You came at the right time. Let's go inside now. Xijinshan left Mrs. Jin and Miss Ji behind at once, then walked straight to Zibiying. I think they have something more to talk about with you. Is it all right if you leave right now? said Zibiying, giving Mrs. Jin and Miss Ji a glance. Why don't you finish the talk with them? I can go in first. Zibiying seemed considerate. But she was actually being sarcastic. Her target was Xijinchen. Xijinchen knew it. So he explained at once feeling aggrieved. I didn't have anything to talk about with them. I'm not familiar with them anyway. None of my business, said Zibiying airily. After that, she directly walked inside, leaving Xijinchen behind. It seemed that she didn't care about it at all. But she actually felt quite pleased. Although she was mad at the beginning and had even attacked Xijinchen sarcastically. She wasn't really annoyed at him, because she knew the two women wouldn't let him go. Out of manners, Xijinshan had to reply to them. However, what he just said publicly embarrassed them. After Zibiying walked inside, Xijinshan followed her right away without paying any attention to Mrs. Jin and Miss Ji. Mrs. Jin and Miss Ji were angry when Xijinshan said that publicly. To their surprise, Xijinshan wouldn't hesitate to embarrass them. Besides, this time, they could clearly see that Xijinshan's relationship with Zibiying wasn't simple at all. Mom, I don't think he likes me. He never bothers to pay attention to me even after we've met a few times. It can't be more obvious that he likes that woman, said Jizijing, biting her lips heavily. She felt she was a loser. She really liked Xijinshan, although she indeed wanted to climb up the social ladder through him. Anyway. Xijinshan was very important in her heart. Now she realized that she wouldn't have any chances, especially after knowing that Xijinshan already found a girl he liked. She was filled with sadness and disappointment. However, she didn't know what to do about that. In fact, compared with people in her friend's circle, she was very outstanding when it came to her family background, 
appearance, academic degree, and job, but she lacked confidence when facing Xi Jinjin, because Xi Jinjin was even better than her. I need to ask Mrs. Xu about it, said Mrs. Xu. She was unwilling to give up, so she took out her phone and called Mrs. Xu at once. After all, Xi Jinjin was handsome, outstanding and was born in a powerful family, which made him a perfect choice. Actually, even if Xi Jinjin was ugly and good for nothing, Mrs. Ju would still choose Xi Jinjin to be her son-in-law. If a man was only good-looking, he might not be able to make a lot of money. If a man only had abilities, but didn't have a powerful family to support him, it was hard for him to be successful in the future. As long as he had a powerful family as the support, he could live in the lap of luxury forever even if he didn't work for a day. Before long, Mrs. Xu answered the call. When Mrs. Xu received Mrs. Ji's call, she felt a little guilty, because she hadn't told Mrs. Ji that Xu Jinjin had already found a girl he liked yet. Anyway, since Mrs. Ji called this time, she could tell her about that right now, or it would cause more trouble. Hi, Mrs. Xu, what are you doing now? asked Mrs. Ji. I'm at home now Mrs. Xu said, oh, right, Mrs. Ji, I should apologize to you for one thing. What is it? Mrs. Ji got nervous and immediately thought of Xi Jinjin. Was it true that Xi Jinjin already found a girl he liked? Was it impossible for her daughter to be together with Xi Jinjin? Although she had that guess, she hoped it wasn't true.